Hi everyone, this is Damon from Edureka. In this video, you will learn what tools you need to become a DevOps engineer and what are the roles and responsibilities of a DevOps engineer. So before we get started, if you like our videos, please do not forget to subscribe to the Edureka YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to never miss out on any updates. Also, if you guys are interested in our certification training, do check out the link shared in the description below. So without any further delay, let's get on with the video. First, you need to understand that there are two main parts when creating an application. The development part where software developers programs the application and testing of application. And the operation part where the application is deployed and maintained on a server. And DevOps is a link between the two. Now, this is a bit too abstract. So let's dive into the details to really understand the DevOps tasks and which tools are needed to carry out these tasks. Concept of software development. It all starts with the application. Developers team which program an application with any technology stack, different programming languages, build tools, etc. And they will of course have a code repository to work on the code in a team. One of the most popular ones today is Git. Now you as a DevOps engineer will not be programming the application, but you need to understand the concept of how developer works, which Git workflow they're using, also how the application is configured to talk to other services or databases, as well as concepts of automated testing and so on. Operating System and Linux Basics Now that application needs to be deployed on a server so that eventually user can access it, right? That's why we're developing it. So we need some kind of an infrastructure on-premises server or cloud server. And these servers need to be created and configured to run our application. Again, you as a DevOps engineer may be responsible for preparing the infrastructure to run the application. And since most of the server where applications are running are Linux servers, you need to have a knowledge on Linux and you need to be comfortable using the command line interface because you will be doing most of the stuff on the server using command line interface. So knowing basic Linux commands, installing different tools and software on servers, understanding Linux file system, basics of how to administer a server, how to SSH into the server and so on. Scripting language. In addition, since you are closely working with developers and system administrators, to also automate some of the tasks for them, you will most probably need to write script. Maybe small application to automate tasks like doing backups, system monitoring tasks, cron jobs, network management and so on. In order to be able to do that, you need to know a scripting language. Now this could be an operating system specific scripting language like Bash or PowerShell or what's even more demanded a more powerful and flexible language like Python, Ruby or Golink which are also operating system independent. Again, here you just need to learn one of these languages and Python without a doubt is the most popular and demanded one in today's DevOps space. Easy to learn, easy to read and very flexible. Python has libraries for most of the databases operating system tasks as well as for different cloud platforms. Version control. Now with these automation tools and languages, you write all of these automation logic as code like creating, managing and configuring infrastructure. That's why the name infrastructure as code. Now, how do you manage your code? Just like the application code, you manage this also using version control like Git. So as a DevOps engineer, you also need to learn Git, build automation and CI CD. Now we have developers who are creating new features and bug fixes on one side and we have infrastructure or server which are managed and configured to run the application. The question now is how to get these features and bugs fixed from the development team to the server to make it available to the end users. So how do we release the new application version basically? And that's where the main task and responsibilities of a DevOps comes in. With DevOps, the question is not just how we do this in any possible way, but how we do this continuously and in an efficient, fast and automated way. So first of all, when the features or bug fix is done, we need to run the test and package the application as an artifacts like jar file or zip etc so that we can deploy it. That's where build tools and package manager tools comes in. Some of the examples are Maven and Gradle for Java application, NPM for JavaScript application and so on. So you need to understand how this process of packaging testing application work. As I mentioned, containers are being adopted by more and more companies as a new standard. So you will probably be building Docker's image from your application. As the next step, this image must be saved somewhere, right? in an image repository. So Docker Artifact Repository or Nexus or Docker Hub etc will be used here. So you need to understand how to create and manage Artifact Repository as well. And of course you don't want to do all of this manually. Instead, 
you want one pipeline that does all of these in a sequential step. So you need build automation and one of the most popular build automation tools is Jenkins. Of course, you need to connect this pipeline with the Git repository to get the code. So this is a part of continuous integration process where codes changes from the code repository get continuously tested. And you want to deploy that new features or bug fix to the server after it's tested, built and packaged which is a part of continuous deployment process where code changes get deployed continuously on a deployed server and there could be some additional steps in the pipeline like sending notification to the team about the pipeline state or handling failed deployment etc. But this flow represents the core of the CI-CD pipeline and the CI-CD pipeline happens to be at the heart of the DevOps tasks and responsibilities. So you as a DevOps engineer should be able to configure the complete CI-CD pipeline of your application and the pipeline should be continuous. That's why the unofficial logo of DevOps is an infinite cycle. Because the application improvement is infinite, new features and bug fixes gets added all the time that needs to be deployed. Infrastructure as code. Now let's say this is our production environment. Well in your project you will of course need development and testing or staging environment as well to properly test your application before deploying it to the production. So you need that same deployment environment multiple times creating and maintaining the infrastructure for one environment only takes a lot of time and is very error prone. So we don't want to do it manually three times. As I said before we want to automate as much as possible. So how do we automate this process? Creating the infrastructure as well as configuring it to run your application and then deploying your application on that configured infrastructure. It can be done using a combination of two types of infrastructure as code tools. Number one is infrastructure provisioning tools like Terraform for example and configuration management tools like Ansible or Chef etc. So you as a DevOps engineer should know one of these tools to make your own work more efficient as well as make your environment more transparent so you know exactly in which state it is and easy to replicate and easy to recover. Containers. Nowadays as containers have become the new standard you will probably be running your application as containers on a server. This means you need to generally understand concepts of virtualization and also be able to manage containerized application on a server. One of the most popular container technology today is Docker. So you will definitely need to learn it. Container orchestration. Now application will run as containers right? Because we're building docker images and containers needs to be managed. For small application docker composers or docker swarm is enough to manage them. But if you have a lot of containers like in case of big microservices you need a more powerful container orchestration tools to do the job. Most popular of which is Kubernetes. So you need to understand how Kubernetes work and be able to administer and manage the cluster as well as deploy application in it. Cloud providers. Now let's go back to the infrastructure where our application is running. Nowadays many companies are using virtual infrastructure on the cloud instead of creating and managing their own physical infrastructure. These are infrastructure like AWS, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud etc. One obvious reason for that is to save costs of setting up your own infrastructure. But these platforms also manage a lot of stuff for you, making it much easier to manage your infrastructure there. So for example using a UI, you can create your network configuration firewall, route tables and all part of your infrastructure through services and feature these platforms provide. However, many of these features and services are platform specific. So you need to learn them to manage infrastructure there. So if your application will run on AWS, you need to learn the AWS and its services. Now AWS is pretty complex but again you don't have to learn all these services that it offers. You just need to know those concepts and services that you need to deploy and run your specific application on the AWS infrastructure. Networking and security. You also need to know basics of networking and security. For example to configure firewall to secure the application but also open some ports to make application accessible from outside as well as understand how IP addresses ports and DNS works. However to draw a line here between the IT operation and DevOps you don't have to have advanced super operating system or networking and security skill and be able to administer these servers from start to finish. There are own professions like network and system administrator, security engineers and so on that really specialize in one of these area. So your job is to understand the concept and know all these to the extent 
that you'll be able to prepare the server to run your application, but not to completely take over the managing the server and the whole infrastructure. Monitoring. Now, when you have all these maybe thousands of containers running in Kubernetes or hundreds of servers, how do you track the performance of your individual application? Or whether everything runs successfully, whether your infrastructure has any problems, and more important, how do you know in real time if your user are experiencing any problems? One of your responsibility as a DevOps engineer may be to set up monitoring for your running application, the underlying Kubernetes cluster and the server on which the cluster is running. So you need to know a monitoring tools like Prometheus or Nagios, etc. DevOps tools. So at this point, you may be thinking, how many of these tools do I need to learn? Do I need to learn multiple tools in each category? Also, which one should I learn? Because there are so many of them. Well, you should learn one tools in each category. One that's the most popular and most widely used. Because once you understand the concept well, building on that knowledge and using an alternative tools will be much easier. If for example, you need to use another tools in your company or project, so as you see, these are a lot of technologies that you need to learn as a DevOps engineer and it might be overwhelming. So if you're thinking you don't know where to start or where to learn all these, then we at Adoreka have created a complete DevOps training where you can learn all these technology in a structured way. So if you're interested, you can check out the information in the description below. Now let me know in the comments which one of these concepts do you want me to cover next. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!